Hi everyone, it's Rax. Diablo 4 Season 5 is going to start in a few days, and of course I'm back with a completely new leveling guide, and it should be your fastest 1 to 100 ever, because Blizzard has made the leveling easier, and also the power creep continues to rise. I'll show you all the new tips and tricks that we have here, and uh, I spent a little bit of time leveling in Season 4. I, if I'm counting correctly, I leveled 1 100 in softcore and 24 100s in hardcore. So I had 25 100s just last season. So uh, I know a thing or two about uh, getting to 100 quickly. So I've got this and I've got paint. Let's talk through some of the changes here. So first of all, Blizzard has raised the based monster XP value to plus 30. So what does that mean? Before, when you got to World Tier 4, maybe you're level 75 and you actually have some really good gear, you got a good build, and maybe you could fight level 90 monsters, level 95 monsters in Nightmare Dungeons quite easily, and you're just zipping through the dungeons. Well, that wouldn't really benefit you before because the base monster XP, I believe, was capped at plus 10 before. Now they've tripled it and they've raised it to plus 30. So this mostly is a buff at the end of the game more so in World Tier 4, but when you can fight monsters that are much higher than you, you will get much higher XP. It's going to expedite how fast you can get to 100. They've also added new XP dungeons. I'm not sure if this is going to actually impact anything, but they're kind of like miniature infernal hordes, and I think they're mostly for like the World Tier 1 and 2 experience to get you warmed up and ready um, for the real thing when you get into the end game. And they said that they have very, very good loot, and I'm assuming they're supposed to have good XP as well. Um, I have a note here listed in the leveling guide. I have a feeling Helltides are still just going to beat it, so if you really want to go fast, Helltide in the beginning would be better. But it's something to try, and if you're looking for something new, who knows, they might be amazing. One thing that we have definitely learned that should hold true, because I didn't see any patch notes that changed it, is the highest XP in the game is Nightmare Dungeon events, the cursed chests, the cursed shrines, the cursed wells, some of the side uh, events as well. That will give you more XP than anything, especially if you have a very, very good build that's good at AoEing all the waves down instantly. Some of the builds are able to get close to wave 30 on some of these events. If you can get anywhere near that, you're just going to fly to 100. Also keep in mind, Blizzard still hasn't given a solution for Glyph XP. The only way that you can get Glyph XP is by running Nightmare Dungeons. A lot of the other rewards in the game have kind of a buddy system where you could get it over here or you could get it over there and you can kind of choose. Not with Glyph XP that I know of. So you're going to have to do Nightmare Dungeons anyway, so you might as well use it to race to 100. Remember that Helltides got buffed kind of in two ways, not just for the fact that Whispers are in one zone, but also the Mind Cages have come back. So the Whispers are a huge buff because the Whispers within Helltide used to be scattered around the entire Helltide. And if only we could do the Whispers easily within the Helltide, then we could do the Helltide, and then there's five minutes of downtime at the end of the hour then we can go turn it in, and then we get a big buff in XP and items. Well, Blizzard changed this, and they put the Whispers together within the Helltide. So you go to the Helltide, you're going to do the events that you see, and you're going to complete it. Unless the boss is too hard, then you can just skip it at that point. Then you're going to do the Whispers within the Helltide, and it's essentially just double-dipping and making it much easier for you. Again, if you don't want to go to Nightmare, Dunge Di Nightmare Dungeons in World Tier 3 and 4, the mine cages are back, and now they stack up to plus three, which of course perfectly coincides with this to raise the monster levels to plus 30. Will a Helltide at plus 30 give you more XP than a Nightmare Dungeon at plus 30 with the event? Probably not, but it should be kind of comparable. So if you want to level up this way, it will probably be slower, but not by much. And if it's way more fun for you, you can do that as well. Remember, there's also the Infernal Hordes. They brought the timer down, they nerfed the boss XP, and they put way more monsters in there. 
Could the Infernal Hordes possibly be more XP than any of this? It's possible, but uh, I tested it on the PTR and it wasn't even close. So it would have taken a colossal buff for it to be better. Do I think it's going to be better? No, but maybe. And then finally, Blizzard is giving you an incentive to reach 100. They are really doubling down on the fact that if you reach 100, then they want to put more stuff in your journey where they're going to just give you better loot after you reach 100. So this is a priority for you. It's not, well, I'm level 90. Let me start looking for my really good gear. It's if you get to 100 quickly and then start farming, then it's going to start rolling in. There's a lot of rumors that Blizzard is going to change the progression the progression system dramatically. We've seen screenshots. It's going to cap at 60. The Paragon is going to change, da-da-da-da-da. I mean, I guess we'll see. But we're seeing a theme here. Blizzard is not having leveling up be the journey. They're making it very, very easy, and they want the journey to begin after that. So we'll have to see uh, how that all correlates. Now, in the uh, spreadsheet, they forgot to mention this in the patch notes. I don't know if they put them in the patch notes now, but they have implemented kind of the Diablo 3 uh, season journey, where they're going to give you essentially a full set of gear around a certain theme for each class. And Adam Fletcher tweeted or X'd or message, what's the verb on that now? I have no idea what it's going to be for every class. So Barb is going to be weapon swapping and not knockback. That's, that sounds like a snooze fest to me. Cataclysm and companions. That seems pretty good. Bone spirit, bone prison, and bone golem. Wouldn't be my first choice, but not the worst. Chain lightning and mana. This is definitely what I'm going to play. This is definitely the one I'm going for. Flurry, dark shroud, and mobility should be super excellent with the changes, and uh, Rogue should be pretty happy about that. So definitely not going to start Barb or Necro with uh, these lackluster changes, although Necro might win the f first 1 to 100 hardcore. I think the Sorcerer Chain Lightning is going to be way too fun to pass up. So uh, you get the seasonal quest line. They said it's going to start in World Tier 1 or 2. It's always a good idea to start the season quest first. Once you got through that, it's time for Helltide. Remember that the Whispers are condensed within each other, so go ahead and do that. Remember that the world bosses now are way harder. They have resilience now, and they're, they're actually a... <coughs> excuse me, I'm dying. <coughs> they're actually a fight. Absolutely not worth doing until World Tier 4. <coughs> so I, you will never see me at a world boss until I'm powerful in World Tier 4. Huge waste of time. We got no time for that. We got to level up. Remember, there are those new XP dungeons. I mean, you wouldn't be a bad idea to go sneak over and try one. Make a note of how much XP you get for how long it takes to do it. It wasn't on the PTR, so I couldn't test it. So I don't know anything about it. Blizzard said on the campfire, they drop really good loot. What is really good? I don't know, but maybe. I don't know. So give it a try. Then you're going to get your class mechanic, your technique slot, your spirit boons at level 15. Necros are at 25. Then you're just going to keep leveling up. Now, remember, it doesn't really benefit you very much to try to go to World Tier 3 much before 35. Because 35 is the first level where you can wear sacred items. So... Maybe some Giga Chads will try to go there at like 30 or something. But it, you should only go there earlier than 35 if, if you really know what you're doing. At least at 35 or 45, get some gear, get your stuff. Then you can go clear the capstone, no problem. And then uh, a change from how, how I was advising you last time. Last time I said, just do Hell Tides in World Tier 3 and then do Nightmare Dungeons in World Tier 4. This is not good advice. It's much better to do Nightmare Dungeons the moment they're available to you. They're way higher XP because of the events. Now, I talked to Blizzard in Season 4 because I leveled up 25 100s, and I kept saying, one of the worst experiences is you kill the curator 
and then you don't have a Nightmare Dungeon key. So then you have to go do a Tree of Whisper and turn it in, and then sometimes it gives you a key, and sometimes it gives you dust to craft a key, but neither of them are guaranteed, and sometimes you have to do multiple Tree of Whisper rounds to even engage in Nightmare Dungeons. They agree that this was bad, so now the curator will drop you a Nightmare Dungeon sigil. Now, there is one way that you can get very unlucky. You could get the Nightmare Dungeon sigil to drop, and it could be locked behind a stronghold. If that happens, you got no choice. You got to go do the stronghold. Do the stronghold, then open up the key, and then you'll be blasting. If you ain't got no time for that, you could just do Helltide, but it is not as fast as Nightmare Dungeons. It, it, it just is not there. It's just that simple. Also at World Tier 3, the Infernal Hordes should unlock, if I understand it correctly, from what they described. You could try that. Again, is it going to be better than Nightmare Dungeon events? Probably not. And remember, you have to get your sigil, your, uh, your glyphs leveled up anyway. So if it's the highest XP and you have to do it anyway, it probably makes sense to go to the Nightmare Dungeons and then wait until you have the, the loot bonus to do the Infernal Hordes then if you want to be efficient. But don't let me tell you how to have fun. Play whatever way you want, but this is the leveling guide. I'm going to tell you the most efficient way to do it. Then when you're about 60, you can clear the next capstone dungeon. The, I believe the level, where you, the level where you can wear ancestral gear is 55. So if you want to go at 55, if you've got a pretty good build, even a casual player should be able to beat Elias at 55. Just make sure you have capped your fire res. It's right here. Elias is not the most dangerous monster in the second capstone. It's those big slammy boys right before him. Those are the guys that are going to destroy you. Not surprisingly, what you do from 60 to 100 is Nightmare Dungeons and do the events. You can try, my, you can try Helltide with multiple mine cages. Um, but be very, pay very close attention to how strong you are. So. If you're going Sorcerer Chain Lightning, in Season 4, the items that they gave you for the build were actually pretty damn good. They made you pretty strong. If that's true, if you have really good powers, then pay attention to the Nightmare Dungeon key that you're running, the levels of it. Try with monsters 15 levels higher than you and see how it feels. Are you just completely deleting them? If you are, Maybe you get some dust. Try crafting 20, 25 levels higher than you. If you've got no problem clearing it, you're going to level up much faster because remember, they changed the base XP to be plus 30. So you are rewarded if you try challenging content or if you go to Helltide and stack the mine cages. So keep that in mind. One thing that I should call out, a lot of people were watching me like, level up all the classes last season and like go really fast and they were most people were always asking why are my characters so strong at such a low level when they've been playing much much longer and they have no power i can, I can tell you the answer it's tempering tempering right before you make a transition before you go to the next capstone when you get your first sacred items it's all about tempering Tempering gives you like so much additive damage. And there's a tempering recipe, I believe it's called Elemental Surge, that says lucky hit, chance to hit enemies for like 8,000 elemental damage. That is so crazy overpowered in the, early, in the early game. I can't remember. They were talking about nerfing it. I can't remember if they actually nerfed it for this season. But things like that are so crazy strong. A fully tempered character versus a non-fully tempered character is just night and day difference. So whenever you're, gonna, whenever you're feeling weak, the, for, the biggest hint I could possibly give you is go to the blacksmith and look at all of your gear and temper it. Put some life rolls on your armor, put some additive damage or elemental surge on all of your stuff where you say, oh, I'm throwing bone spears. So I throw it at range. So damage to distant or just percent damage everywhere is good enough. 
if you put that on every piece, your damage might like double or triple. It's, it's crazy. Okay. So that's the biggest hint. Temper your gear. And then you will be a god. Get the correct powers. Follow a build on max roll. Uh, look, at the, look at the builds that they're just going to hand you. Flurry Rogue, Chain Lightning, Sorcerer, Bone Spirit, Necro, Cataclysm, or Companion Druid, Weapon Swapping Barb. Choosing those are just going to hand it to you on a silver platter, so you might as well do that. And in Diablo, it, we don't have the armor yet. Believe me, I've been complaining, and a lot of other content, complainers, content creators have been complaining. Content complainers, that's a nice, that's a nice term. I, I might coin that. That's actually pretty good. We've been crying about the armory. So uh, I, have, I, I think Blizzard's going to do it. I think there's a 99% chance we're going to get it, but it's not here yet. So um, we're going to, you can start as one of these builds and switch to something else later. It's not really that big of a deal, but it is kind of annoying. And that's it, guys. So um, uh, a few things. So I will be making a tier list like I always do. I'll be completely honest. The tier list is really kind of, more for fun at this point i i i haven't i don't have the time to sit down and process they literally changed the entire game i'd have to sit there in theory craft for days and days and days to try to actually get the right answer but i can get kind of a feeling for who i think is going to be the best and i i don't know i don't know if you i don't know if you'll be able to guess who i'm going to put at number one see if you can get that right but well the tier list coming out it's mostly for fun i i don't really know but I'll try to get it right. And um, I will have a video explaining my plans for season five because I'm going to do something different. Here's what I've always done. I've always just blasted hardcore and just uh, done that pretty much the entire time. I have very few hours on softcore ever in Diablo 4. Um, but I didn't find that there was really any challenge last season. So all I did all the time was just level up classes and try to get better at leveling. But I have a different idea coming up, and it will be a way for me to play with you guys. So I'll have a video explaining that uh, if you care to watch. But if you want to play with me, Season 5 is the opportunity. We can team up, and we can, uh, we can blast. So those videos are coming up for you. And if there's anything else that you really want me to make, let me know down in the comments. And if I have time, I'll try to get to it. Thank you guys and have so much fun in season five. I'll be live streaming and blasting if you'd like to watch or if you'd like to team up. Thank you.